Hello and good morning. Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. This video is day five of my Carol Tour 2023. So if you're wondering where day four went, there was no day four because it was a rest day here. So I just did a bit of sightseeing, uh, had a couple of meals and did a lot of video editing from the first three days. So today we're gonna to head down to Munar, which is another hill station. So at an altitude of about 1600 meters, which must be four and a half, 5,000 feet, something like that. It's lower than here where we're at 2000 meters. Uh, and it's, uh, we're gonna have to go back down the mountain, retrace some of the steps from day three uh, before turning off through another wildlife sanctuary and heading back up into the hills. Where Monar is in the, in the Western Ghats is known as the Kashmir of South India. Uh, so I think it'll be some interesting scenery. So really looking forward to seeing that. And actually having a day off the bike, just really looking forward to getting back on the bike. I think today is gonna be our longest day, about 185 kilometers, uh, which still by, by general standards isn't, isn't too rough. Uh, so yeah, we're heading off about 9.30, should be in around 3 or 4 p.m. today. So yeah, really looking forward to a day riding my Royal Enfield Himalayan through Tamil Nadu and back over into Kerala. Setting out on day four. We're heading out over Kadai Canal, just leaving the hotel, and uh, yeah, back out to the city. So I'm currently coming along uh, what was a bit like a balcony road, I suppose, which we did ride the other day, except that it was so grey that you really couldn't see very much. Whereas today, looking up, you can see that wooded hillside going all the way up to the top. Wow, you get this amazing view over to the left. I don't know how much of that you can actually see on the GoPro, but that looks pretty amazing. Now then we rode up this road uh, the other day and it was just so misty you couldn't really see anything. So to come up here today and just get this amazing view down the valley is very cool indeed. It's nice to see it under the proper circumstances where you can actually get and appreciate the view. We've got this amazing view well, down through the mist down to the left. But to see the hills and see everything that we couldn't quite see when I came up here the other day is, is great. Yeah, I think when we came up here the mist and the, the dust was just so thick that you couldn't see any of this. So if you saw a bit of grey video or a lot of mountain pass that was just cut uh, from the video from day three, uh, this is what it should have looked like. So we have now descended a bit more down the mountain and it's warmed up a lot, but a consequence of that is also that we're now coming down into this mist. So we've just stopped for a moment, just at the side of the road. We're still not down the mountain, but we've been coming down switchbacks for, I don't know, the last 20 minutes. It's been great fun. There's been a bit of traffic coming up, but nothing too severe. Uh, we can give you a quick look at, well, if I put that all the way down there, you can't quite see the hill up there above me, uh, but you can see the, the next hairpin sort of coming up down there in the distance. And actually, we don't have a great view looking down to see everything, but you can just about see the road uh, over my shoulder there behind me. So you can see a little bit more today than we could on day three. You can see there's the dam out there over my shoulder. We're still in Tamil Nadu. We're gonna go down the rest of the mountain here. We're gonna cut across the valley bottom and then we've got to go up again, another 1600 meters to get up to Munar. So yeah, so far, pretty good morning. I think everyone's enjoying themselves. It's uh, nice to be back on the bikes after a day off. So we've been riding up the road towards Monar. I think we've got about 20 kilometers to go and we just stopped at the side of the road here. And it really is just absolutely stunning. Uh, to look at the scenery around here, it's unlike anything really we've, we've come across on the trip so far. And the road has just been just flowing and just, yeah, just amazing really. Uh, what I will do is I'll put a, a link up to, probably to a relive uh, thing so you can actually see what the route was. Uh, I wish I knew all these roads off the top of my head and what they were called in the regions, but uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get the, the route beforehand. So it's a, uh, it's only really seeing it as, as I get there, but I'll certainly publish that up as part of the description and you can, you can see exactly where we've been. But yeah, this really is stunning all the way around, every direction you look. And the tarmac's just perfect. I mean, okay, the, the buses and the trucks add a, an element of surprise to everything, but for a day's riding, yeah, today has been pretty good. So we had a bit of a stop, uh, had a bit of a break, 
tried to get a bit of lunch and we're entertained by some of the local dogs and now we're just cracking on for Monar and this road really is just so much fun to ride. It's not very wide but it's also pretty quiet and as long as you're prepared for the occasional uh, large vehicle to come around the corner it's just such a cruisy way uh, to see this part of the country. So that's it, that's uh, day five done. It's been a brilliant day of riding, probably the best day I think we've had so far. Uh, the last track down to the hotel was a little bit special, but looking at the views that we have around here from the hotel, they really are remarkable. I don't know if you can see just over my shoulder there, uh, there's this waterfall and we've just seen loads of these today. And considering this is the middle of the dry season, it's not even the rainy season, it's just remarkable how much water there is here. Uh, yeah, you know, a, few, a few scares coming down the mountain, a few things that pulled out in front of us few buses that tried to overtake the whole the whole line of 18 bikes but yeah all in all it's been a really really cracking day uh, we're in Monar now for two nights so tomorrow's a non-riding day again so there'll be no video from day six so I'll pick up again on day seven so hopefully that's been interesting and useful if it has maybe I'll see you next time thanks for watching Hey there, today is day six and it's a day off and we're here in Munar and we're actually going to go and have a look around a, a tea museum. So I won't do a lot of video from here, but given that I lost my audio on day five for the riding, uh, I thought I'd just put a few sightseeing things in. So yeah, we're here at this tea, tea museum. I guess we're going to see how they make tea and get a bit of history. Uh, I won't show you all of that. I think Wikipedia is there to serve that purpose, but I can certainly show you a few views of what it looks like. And we're still in this amazing location here in Munar. You can see all the tea plantations uh, on, the, on the hills up there behind me. So yeah. There you go. Their backyard catch you. And what is the remedy? Will it clear out the waste more three times a day? And so he's talking the through the benefits of a tea that has on preventing provide. cancer and COVID and uh, how long it takes your body to process food. So it's certainly been enlightening. Um, not quite what I expected as a tea factory. But hey, it's. Um, it's only got a lot of smiles around the room. It is still going on, but uh, there's only so much description of one's internal workings that you want to hear when you visit a tea factory. Okay, so this looks a little bit more like what I expected uh, from a tour of a tea factory. Actually looking at the process uh, for making the tea, less discussion about digestion. So uh, what I'm not going to do is uh, go through all of this, but I'll just show you a few of the machines and then I'm sure you can look the rest up on the internet. So this is a orthodox tea roller apparently this is where you get English breakfast tea from the tea leaves go in the top uh, and then they basically get rolled around on this very cool looking machine um, yeah that's a piece of engineering so now we're just walking down the production line I don't know if you can hear me over the sound of everything but he was just saying that the, the very tips of the tea bush is what they use for white tea first two leaves they use for green tea and then the rest is what they use for black tea and they cut black tea with scissors whereas everything else has to be hand-picked if you just want the tips of the green tea but it is pretty noisy in here so I think this is just the production line 
with the tea getting progressively smaller and uh, drier. And if you look at the one on there, the tea going on that conveyor belt is very um, very fine. I think that's almost the end of the process when it's cut. Oh there we go, one more cutter. Yeah even even finer still. So after it's all been chopped up really fine it goes into that cylinder where it's oxidized for apparently four minutes and then it looks like it comes out the other end and goes in back to the conveyor and gets carried off over there. And here we see where the tea comes up the conveyor belt, goes up there, and maybe this is even where they uh, uh, just do the final preparation. What I particularly like in here, as it is a motorbike video, is I think that's the gift shop over there, where they appear to have uh, a Manx TT arcade game. So the tea after it's been oxidized for four minutes, comes on that conveyor belt, comes down here and runs into this big machine, which is apparently a uh, multi-therm fluidized bed dryer. And it comes out over there. This is what comes out of the back of the dryer, and it looks like it comes onto a conveyor belt, gets yeah, shaken all around and sort of uh, rolled, rolled flat, and then at the bottom of this shaker, it looks like um, in this one here is all the husks and bits, and then I think that one there is the actual tea. And then after that, it goes into the shaker over there. So it comes out of the dryer like this, and then it goes into this big sort of shaking thing, and I guess there must be a number of different. Uh, hold grills that go down there and what we have here is just teas in different grades uh, pop out the bottom and just filling up these uh, filling up these buckets and here we have the dry tea thanks Chris and just like any good muse museum we have to exit through the gift shop and they have a lot of tea uh, available to to view and buy and taste so the next stop on the day five sightseeing tour is the Madhupati Reservoir and Dam so I'm just on here at the moment, as you can see, it's a big old damn wall with just traffic and people going across it. Lots of shops if you want to buy some uh, uh, soft toys or some sweet corn or nearly get run over. Uh, so yeah, all good fun. Uh, I'll just have a quick wander over the other side and then I think we're done here. Well, I think it's kind of fun walking over here. Um, tried to time it in between a lot of traffic coming through. It's only a matter of time though. So I'll give you a quick look over the edge of the dam. They have a massive plume of water coming out from the bottom there, which looks kind of cool. Otherwise, we just keep walking over and we're going to get picked up on the other side. So I think that's enough of that. Uh, I think that's probably it, unless there's something to show you in downtown Munar. Uh, so if, it, if there is, I'll show that. If not, this is the end of the video.